It looked like it kicked me. Nope, we're live. Okay, we're live. All right. Everybody, we're getting ready to start in a moment. Um, trying to pull up on our Facebook so I can see the comments, everybody, if you want to know what I'm doing, but it's not cooperating with me right now. So we shall see. But um, so if if uh Brother Ernest can see it. You can see it on your Facebook though, right, Ernest? I'm, I'm logging in now. Okay. Are we still live, Leticia? I don't see it being live. I, I don't see it, but it, it says we're live, so we must be live. Hmm. That's the one thing, y'all, for everybody who's watching us, if anybody is watching us, that's one thing about Zoom that makes it tough. It's hard to see who can see what, uh, with, you know, you and what you can see and everything. Live, I'll see it. So we are live. Okay, can you can you see Ernest who's uh who we can see and everything? Uh well it don't tell me names, but just there's people on, yes. Okay, great. So we're uh, yes, we're live. We're live. So we must okay, we good. got okay. we have 12 people on That's watching. Thing, okay, great, great, great. Everybody want to thank you for uh for joining in with us then as we get things together for those who are online. Um I want to thank you for joining in with us today and we're going to go ahead and uh i asked my co-host i have a co-host now co-host you want to start now or you want to give them a minute or two let's give them one minute just before we start make sure everybody can come right, on one minute before we start so right. in that one minute i'm gonna try to figure out how to see this on uh facebook here y'all but um want to uh thank everybody as always for tuning in with us it's, it's truly a blessing that y'all are uh able to tune in with us. Okay, I can see the people now a little bit. All right, good. I can see it on my Facebook. So I want to thank, um, I see Sister Mitchell's on. Thank you so much, Brother Mitchell. I uh, want to thank Sister Warner, Sister Pi. Hey, Nicole, my wife is on. Good to see you, sweetie. want to thank um, Shaquita is on too, Sister McKenzie. I uh, want to thank everybody who's watching us live right now as we try to juggle this thing and, and make this thing uh, work out for us. want to thank also my co-host, Brother Ernest. Uh, we, we've decided that today, Brother Ernest is going to take the lead today in today's show. Right. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to take the lead. I want to thank, as always, our uh, invaluable production uh, coordinator, Sister Letitia Frey, who keeps this whole thing rolling. So thank you, Letitia. We could not do this without you. And of course, I want to thank everybody in all sincerity for watching us and being a part of what uh, God is doing today. So I want to... Um, Ready to get it started, Ernest? Yeah, let's go. All right, let's bow our heads for a moment of prayer. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity again to come before you, asking that the words of our mouths and meditations of our hearts are acceptable to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Uh, today we're continuing where we left off last week with uh, uh, church post-pandemic. And today's understanding is um, more so how we are the church, not the building, but we are the church. And speaking of that, I want to... Um, just give everybody a heads up. Be on the lookout. You should have already received a link. It'll also be posted to our Facebook page and to my individual page. Um, and you can post it to your individual page. Sunday, we're doing something different. We're doing worship uh, via Zoom on Sunday. So we're inviting everybody into our virtual sanctuary through Zoom on Sunday. But at the same time, we are still gonna be uh, broadcasting it on Facebook and we're going to try to broadcast it on YouTube, but I know it's still going to be on Facebook Live. But for those who want to come and be a part of the service in a different way Sunday, check out the Zoom link, join the Zoom link and come on in uh, as we have a special fellowship worship celebration on Sunday, same time, 10 o'clock. Look forward to seeing everybody out um, as we do that on Sunday. So please be on the lookout for it. So this is uh, today we're talking about the church uh, post pandemic. And there was a specific point that I think Brother Lee brought up and wanted to bring up and touch on um, that we didn't really get a chance to touch on as much as we wanted to last week. So Brother Ernest, you take it away. 
Uh, yeah, last week, so we, we were discussing uh, church post-pandemic, how it's going to look, what to expect. Uh, we, we've never been in this kind of situation before. We've never been uh, in this kind of pandemic where it's, it's just ongoing. You know, normally it's kind of comes and goes, but this is, has been an ebb and flow, so to speak. So, you know, a lot of uh, times we, we, as church people, we we very spiritual and very um, intuitive spiritually, but sometimes when it comes to natural things, we just kind of fall off. The wagon a little bit. So my point is, uh, last week we talked about church post-pandemic. So I brought up a point that the church is not a building, even though that's where we meet. The Bible we know says, fail not to assemble yourselves together. We know that. Uh, how can they hear without a preacher? So I, this is not to do with none of that. I'm talking about the church itself is not the building. The church is us. We are the church. Uh, the Jesus that we're looking for and that people are looking for, they're probably only going to see it in us. They may not ever see it at a church or a church building or on the cross or on a movie or whatever. You know, the church is us. We are the representatives of Christ on earth in the flesh. Uh, we know that that God came and gave his son and we know the story. He came and walked the earth and went away. They are going to prepare a place. We know all that. So we are the church. We are what's left of what he left, his legacy. So how do we get people to Christ if we don't have a building? Because that's where we find ourselves right now. So everybody's on social media, everybody's on Zoom, everybody's on uh, Facebook Live and YouTube and all, and that's fine because we have to do what we have to do. And we know that crises and um, hard times, it sparks and spurs, spurs innovation all the time. So we've been become very innovative over the last three or four months getting creative with this church thing. So. How do we uh, reconcile that to to the church? Because we don't have a building technically. You know, how 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 can we still be effective in reaching the laws, uh, doing the uh, works of Christ, the Great Commission, going to preach and teach and compel? How do we do that without a church building? So you've been a pastor, uh, Doctor Cousin, and I'm a, I'm saying doctor because you have several doctor degrees. So you know, trying to act like I'm the leader. <laughs> As a pastor, how do you feel? Uh, that topic is relevant to to what you're going through as a pastor right now well i mean it, it's it's true because um being that we are the church not the building um one passage of scripture that, that really i want to lift up my my brother michael his uh his uh motto at his church um i think it's still his motto at his current church too i know it was at his last church it was basically this uh he would say in all that you do show them jesus yeah, um, you know, and so show them Jesus through you. And that, that leads me to the scripture. I think it's Matthew 5, um, mm -hmm. 15 and 16. Let your light shine before uh, all people so they may see your good works and glorify your, your father who is in heaven. I think that's Matthew 5. But um, so the thing is, it's, it's about understanding that my light has to shine. OK, so my light has to shine. And that is how I begin to draw people um into the church, not the building, but into the church that is the body. See, I think, Ernest, what we have to begin to understand, and I have another scripture for this one too that we're gonna talk about in a little bit, but um, I, I think you'll like this. Um, you know, God just gave this to me as I'm sitting here right now. Begin to, post-pandemic, think of the church as a body, not a building. And I think too many times we've been thinking of the church as a building, but the church is not a building. The church is a body. Yeah. And when we begin to think of the church as a body of believers made up of individual believers, then it begins to take the focus off of the building. So when the building has to shut down, you still understand it's okay because as long as my light is shining and I'm still with the body, I can still draw people to church because the church again is the body of believers, not the building. Right. So how do we how do we then as leaders deal with those in, in our congregations that are a little set back because we're not in service? And 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 rightfully so, because you know we we develop relationships, we develop uh, uh bonds. <laughs> Uh, church is a, is a gathering place. It's a place of fellowship. It's a place of relief for some. You know, some people go through hell all week long and they, they can't wait to get to the church house. And that's the reason why church uh, has to be on point for, for those that really actually need this thing. You know, you know, we can't play with. I always tell me being in music, I always tell uh, anyone that I'm teaching or or uh, we in rehearsal, you know, 
Sunday is not the time to practice on people's lives. Uh, we don't right. practice on Sunday. We practice at rehearsal during the week. Um, on Sunday, people like to bring up suicide, to bring up divorce, to bring up uh, of losing their minds, uh, uh, losing their jobs, their homes, their children. You know, we can't practice on them on Sunday. So how do we reconcile that thought that, hey, the church, just because we're not meeting on Sunday, doesn't mean that the work of Christ can't go on or you cannot still be blessed or you cannot still be touched or delivered or healed. How can we reconcile that for the people that don't really understand uh, this this not being in church thing right now? Um, I mean, I think that the primary way to do that is just be patient and to understand none of us has been here before, been through this before. So we, we all want to get back into church. We all want to get back into the building. And one of the things I've been praying about and thinking about that it's a strong possibility, a very strong possibility that uh, we will not worship together uh, in person with for the rest of this calendar year. I mean, that's a strong possibility that we won't come back together to worship until at least 2021. Um, because that's just the reality of it. The, the, the virus is still here. It's still out there. It's, it's still happening. It's spiking. You see what's happening with schools. So I think <clears throat> what we have to do is just be patient, be patient with each other, be patient with the leadership of the church. I mean, be patient with your pastor and understand that in everything we do, we're doing it, trying to remain as safe as we possibly can. But you, you hit on something a minute ago, Ernest, is very important too. In the midst of all of this, understand your creativity. I, I was talking with a, a good friend of mine, another pastor who was telling me that as a result of this pandemic, <clears throat> he literally has created an entire new department in his church. And wow. it, it is now the focal point of what they do. And, and that is, and a lot of us have done this, but, but he really did it intently. It was creating an, an online uh, ministry, a, a virtual church. And he oh. said, he just they're pouring their resources into a virtual church because that's where we are now. That's where we're going to be for a while. But here's what happens. We have to begin to be fluid. And, and another thing in terms of um, understanding and compassion and patience, you have to have fluidity. You have to be fluid. You have to be willing to change, willing to flow, willing to do something different, because that's where we are right now. We're in a different season. But if we're stuck trying to think of everything having to look like it's always looked, then we're going to really miss the point of this whole season. And, and we're gonna miss the point of the growth and the potential growth in, in the church body, not building, that can yeah. come as a result of this pandemic. I love when you said uh, a minute ago, you said uh, focus on the church being the body, not the yeah. building. Not the can building. We, can we expound on that a little bit more? I mean, just kind of get yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Well, that, that, takes me, that takes me to the second scripture, the one is First Corinthians 12. Uh, and I'm sure we're all familiar with it, but it just says, you know, beginning with the 12th verse, it says you have uh, one body and, and many parts. And the parts make up the whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. Um, in the body, there are many different parts, not just one part. So the foot cannot say, I'm not a part of the body because I'm not a hand. It doesn't make it any less part of the body. Yes. Um, and if the ear says, I'm not a part of the body because I'm not an eye, it's still not any less of a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, it could not hear. If the whole body were an ear, it could not smell. Our bodies have many parts. God has put each part where he wants it. How strange a body would be if there were only one part. And it goes on to say that sometimes some of the parts of the body that seem the weakest are the most important. And those that seem to be the most important are, are sometimes those that really are not as important as, as they think they are. Yeah. Um, all of that scripture leads to um, the understanding that everybody's got a role to play. Everybody's got something that God has called them to do. And the goal of it is to create harmony in the body. That yeah. is the goal. So when I understand my role, I can create harmony in the body. Uh, not, not getting political, we're not, we're not doing politics today, but if you look at the state of our country um, un under this current leadership, there's not a lot of harmony. There's very little harmony. Um, for, for many reasons, but in the church body, you, you want to make sure to have harmony. And the way to have harmony is to figure out um, where I fit in. But here's the thing, you're gonna love this one, Ernest, um, but here's the problem. Problem is you can't have harmony without humility. Ah. 
So you got to understand my role and my place. Everybody can't be the, the, the lead dog. Everybody can't be the top. Some people have to understand and be in a support role as a pastor of the yes. church. While, while I lead the church, there are also areas where I have to serve in a support role. So Ernest, uh, Brother Lee is, is in charge of all of our music and the worship and the arts at the church. Um, so if it's a music or a worship or an arts issue, um, he receives my input, but him being the lead of that, I stand more in support of him yes. in those roles than I do sitting there personally trying to tell him what songs to play or what to do with this or what to do with that. My thing is um, allowing him to do what God has called him to do in that role while I stand in support so that at the end, it's all harmonious. And, and that's really what the body has to be. The body has to be an element of harmony and we can't have harmony when we have discord and division and disunity. So in this season, once again, even though we're separated physically, we have to remain together in harmony, realizing that whatever role I'm playing in the church, it's, it's just as important and just as vital as anybody else's role. Man, you've said a lot with that, but that, you know, <laughs> a lot of, a lot of people do not, and, and I'm not, again, me being, I'm not a pastor, so I, I, I know this is a fraternity of y'all. been around a lot. Yeah, but that's what I was about to say. I've been in this thing a long time, and so so many leaders just don't understand what you just said about when you have the support in place. Uh, you can't ask God to bring you help, and then you run the help away. Absolutely. Uh, so sometimes we don't understand. I remember my parents in Detroit, uh, the Reverend Dr. Wilma R. Johnson said, uh, one time we had some issue came up in, in church one time, and she wasn't getting right. yeah. she, told us, she told us that this church would be nothing without faithful volunteers. She said that so cleanly and so plainly. And, and that has always stuck with, stuck with me uh, as I've uh, matriculated through my journey of leadership. And, I, you know, the, the church is nothing without its volunteers. So that means the church is nothing without its body. It's, it's nothing without its support. So as we go post-pandemic and we try to figure this thing out, you know, when you go on virtually, you still need the church to run. You still need tithes and offerings. You still need the, the AV ministry. You still need the hospitality ministry. You still need to be able to take in members uh, because some people's churches are growing even now. You understand? So my whole thing is this. You know, as we go into this thing, we can't lose sight of the fact that business, and I know people don't like to use that in church, but business must go on uh, during this time because we are the church. We are what makes it go. Uh, a building is nothing without its occupants. It's just sitting there empty. No. You know, and, and you know, but but at the end of the day, that the, the, when we're not in the building, we're still representing that building. We're still representing that company, that brand. So what we have to understand as 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 lay members and people that are support, then when we're not in the building, we're still representing God. We're still representing Christ. So as a pastor, again, let me ask you. You know, what is our our goal? Uh, what should be I should say? What should be our goal right now as it relates to souls post pandemic? Um, the the whole thing. It's the same thing post-pandemic would be, same thing it was pre-pandemic. Our, our goal is, as believers, to use our witness to lead other people to Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't want anyone to be condemned to damnation. You know, we don't talk about it uh, probably as much as we should. But we don't want any soul to be lost. Yes. We don't want any person to be lost. So we want to be in the process of helping people. We can't save anyone, but we can help them to find true salvation through Jesus Christ. So that's what we try to do. Um, and the way we do that during this season is to really promote harmony. Yes. Because since we don't have the building together anymore, people really need to see that in us because that's what they see. So we promote the harmony. And also back to the, to the volunteer issue, I say this all the time. And Alan Temple, you've heard me say this and every church I've pastored, I've said this, I can't do this job without you. Uh, it is impossible for me to do this job without your help. I can't. Um, I cannot sustain the building, the physical building without you. Uh, we cannot sustain the resources to be a blessing to the community without you. We cannot sustain the salaries we have to pay, uh, including my own, without you. We can't. We can't do any of this stuff without you. So we absolutely always need you. But especially now, because Ernest, as you know, the old saying, out of sight, out of mind. Yes. And, yes. And since we can't be in the building, um, then we have to really, really, really be diligent on still doing the things that maintain both the building and the body of Christ. And, and in terms of giving, 
you know, um, it, it's still important to give what, what God desires us to give. And, and one of the things that I've been inspired to do lately, and, and this is a great inspiration that came um, through, through a friend of mine and God blessed me with this. He said, just basically when it comes to your giving, do this. Um, basically ask God, God, what do you want me to give? What do you want me to give? Pray, say, Lord, what do you want me to give? And then whatever God tells you to give, give it. Now, that is not just monetary. That is also the giving of my time. That is the giving of my talent. That is the giving of my service. That is the giving of my commitment. That is the giving of my praise. That is the giving of my worship. That is the giving of my entire being to God, whatever it is that God asked for. And, and, and to do it with humility and also to do it realizing that my role is just as important as anybody else's. You know, um... Before, before time gets away from us, I wanted to hit this thing. Uh, uh, let's go to the scripture, 1 Timothy 5. Um, because I don't know if people realize it or not, but, you know, the church, uh, the Bible doesn't necessarily ever really mention a church building. Uh, it mentions synagogues and stuff like that. But I'm saying the church and what we, in 21st century, what we call church. It doesn't right. really it doesn't really come up in conversation. I mean, and, and right now when it comes up in conversation, the first thing we think of is a building. In, in 1 Timothy 5, Paul describes the church as people dedicated to doing whatever it takes to reach out and help others. Let me say it again. Paul describes the church in 1 Timothy 5 as people dedicated to doing whatever it takes to reach out and help others. So we have a responsibility to help others and serve others and, and help the community and all this stuff. So like you just said, it should not uh, uh servanthood and 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 our sacrifice should not stop because we're not in the building and that's one thing i think all of us need to come up on you know your service to god doesn't stop because you uh are not there just like at, at your job um if you start posting some stupid stuff on social media and you got a nice job you you're, you you represent the comp company while you're off hours uh so it, it it matters what we do outside of the building so we got to understand caring for each other and and, and serving each other is just as uh uh it's just as important as coming to church or coming to Sunday morning service because that's what we're uh, called to do with the Great Commission, to compel men. How are they going to see any other Jesus that we preaching unless they sit in us first? Because they can't see him. Uh, they can't see God because God is the spirit. And think about this. Each of us have been giving, uh, we've been given skills, talents, abilities. We're all capable, uh, capable of serving. We have opportunity to serve. And in 1 Timothy 5, like I said, see, uh, I think it was Timothy's church they were talking about in First Timothy five. So, so, so the, the, what they were talking about is, uh, for example, uh, who, women ran the, the women ran the, uh, the the women's ministry. Uh, the elders directed church affairs, and and others were just devoted to teaching and praying. So, so we're all like you said, we all have our jobs, our roles, and if we're not fulfilling those roles, even if we're not in the building, then church is not going on as we think it is. We're only just uh, going through the motions. So we have to understand that the Bible has always referenced church as to people, not to a place. See, the church is a body of believers that live out the gospel. We're literally living out the gospel in real time. Uh, mm -hmm. The gospel, that, that, and that's deep right there. Think about it. You know, mm -hmm. we've, we've, we've been taught this thing a long time, but people always talk about the, the end times and the last days, and that's cool. But are we really, are we really living out the gospel? Because we're the church. So if we're the church, then we are the living uh, uh, people that's, that's living out this thing that we call church. So we have to live it out in real time. And and th this is a part, and um, our, our wonderful production um, director has reminded us that it, that it is getting the hours drawing nigh, as they say. But look, here, here's the thing, though, Ernest. So we're um, going to go to 12.30 today. Yeah, we go to 12.30. That's fine. But, but, but here's the thing, though. Um, it's important for us to understand, okay, when the church was a building or was perceived as a building, right? Mm -hmm. I go to church on Sunday. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm holy on Sunday. I'm, I'm holy. I'm, you know, I'm in church. I'm singing the song, singing the hymns. I'm clapping my hands, listening to the word, you know, shouting and falling out, everything else. But then Monday through Saturday, I separate myself from church because it's a building. So I go to other places and I can cut the food Monday through Saturday, but Sunday I'm in church. So I got to be right. Okay. Watch this. We don't have the building anymore. Right. The separation we used to have where church was a Sunday thing. 
church right. can't be a Sunday thing anymore uh, because now the church really does. It, it is pushed to the forefront that the church resides in us. So yeah. if I'm cutting the fool, then the church is cutting the fool. If I'm acting crazy, the church is acting crazy. It's yeah. not the building, it's me. And I had a friend of mine who said this, he said, uh, everybody now talking about uh, being late to church. How are you gonna be late to the church service now when the church service resides on your phone? You know, <laughs> how are you gonna be late? So I begin now to realize that my, my worship, my, my church is not just a Sunday thing. It becomes a Monday through Saturday thing as well. So now yeah. if I can carry that spirit over into when we gather in the building again, Man, how powerful will that be when I've built up um, the, 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 the goodness, the, the walk, the, the light, the reflection, all that stuff all week long. And then in Sunday, I come not just to shine it before other people, but I also come to let it out and give God the glory. So I'm not coming to the building on Sunday looking to receive. I'm coming to the building on Sunday looking to give based upon what I've been able to gather through my walk the whole week because I am the church and I've never left church. I just haven't been in the building. It's, it's that whole separation again of, of understanding and it's not about a building. So also now, um, and, and this is something we, we really got to get. And somebody said earlier, they thank me for transparency and thank you for transparency, Ernest, and I appreciate that. Because here's the thing, y'all, Changes will come to a building. Yeah. Changes will happen in a building. They have to happen. Things have to change. In your house, if you still have, um, I don't know if y'all remember back in the day, remember those lamps? You turn them on and, and little oil beads would run up the lamp. Remember those? <laughs> From like way back when we were little earnest. Your age, remember? Don't, don't. <laughs> And, then, and remember that remember the velvet paintings? You know, always got a velvet painting with a woman with an afro and a tiger or something on it, all that kind of stuff. Look, man, if you still got that stuff in your house in 2020, I'm praying for you. If you still got a reel to reel and you still got an eight track in your house in 2020, I'm praying for you. Uh, if you still got a fax machine, come on, somebody, and that's your pro your primary mode of communication. Stuff changes, y'all. So in the building, stuff changes. But when the church is the body, then there's some things that never change. And one of the things that never changes is my desire, my commitment to lead to God and to drive other people closer to Jesus. Uh, I want to say this now, you know, everybody know, well, some people may not know, I joined, uh, officially joined uh, Allen Temple uh, mm -hmm. in almost two weeks. And, and my point is saying that, I want to hit this before we run out of time. Um, this won't even have an effect on you if you're not connected to a local body. What I mean is, so we need to, even in this post-pandemic, we need to, and we don't have a church home, or we don't have uh, someone that we're connected to, or something that a body of believers that we are accountable to, or, or just connected to in general, you know, then we're doing ourselves a disservice, because again, when you're out here on your own, uh, without backup, see, being connected to a church is more than just uh, uh, just coming on Sunday, it's it's actually getting involved in the community, meaning the community of the church, getting involved in the, 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 auxiliary, the auxiliaries of the church, the, the functioning of how things go. We have to find ourselves busy during this time, too, with our church. So I want to ask before, I want everybody to think about this. On a scale of 1 to 10, ask yourself this, and then write it down if you have to. On a scale of 1 to 10, and be honest. Comment on it. It is in the comments. Okay, yeah, we can say it in the comments. On a scale of 1 to 10, how connected are you to your church during the week? I ain't say Sunday. Right. Because we all log in on Sunday now. We can log in. The, we can church hop on Sunday now, <laughs> and nobody even know it. But how connected are you to your church during the week? I want anybody to think about that. Say it in your comment. In the comments, write it down. Ask yourself on a scale of one to ten, how connected am I to my church during the week? Because some of us can't connect, stay connected long after services. When services over, we disconnect instantly. You know. And my whole thing is this: that then you have to ask yourself, am I really uh, giving myself an opportunity to grow? I know yours is what teach, serve, grow, go. That's right. your teach, thing. Teach, go, serve, grow. Right. So how can we do those things if we're not actually connected during the week? And see, now this is the part that I'm torn, Ernest. I'm torn. I'm gonna tell you why I'm torn. I'm um I'm a, I'm an advocate of church growth. Church growth is my thing. I'm all about church growth. I believe um, anything that's not growing is is dying. 
you know, yep. you, I'm, I'm a believer in church growth and not just in just numbers of people, but also in individual growth of the growth of the individual. Okay, so to Ernest's point about being connected, um, I'm torn because in this day and age, we have people who are joining churches all over the place that aren't even part of the community that where the church is, they'll, they'll, live in, they'll live in Atlanta and join a church in California, or they'll live in, in um, California and join a church in Maine or whatever, because it speaks to them. I'm torn because while I agree with that and while I think that's great and everybody should be connected to a body, it's that one word Ernest said that, that troubles my spirit and that's local. Mm -hmm. Because I'm asking myself in this, in, in post pandemic, um, I think that it's important to be connected to a body. Um, and I, I would like to say a, a local body, but if you're not connected to a local body and, and if God leads you to join a church that's a long way away from where you live, that's fine. But you still have to find ways to be connected more yes. so than just tuning in and watching a service on Sunday. Yes. That, and that's my point. So that's why I want people to ask themselves this because you're not really, and I can't, you know, I'm not judging anybody by saying this, but you no, can't no. be, you can't really be, say you connected because you just say you're a member. I mean, I'm a member of a gym that I don't go in, I don't go all the time. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I'm a, I'm a member of AAA. I don't use it all the time. I mean, I'm saying my whole thing is like, you know, I think we use membership as a convenience sometimes to, to and this is the last one I want to make for the day. I said it last week. We're, we're, we are married to buildings and personalities. Uh, again, I'm not coming against any, any preachers. That's not my point. My point is, as people, sometimes we're personality driven. So like to your point, I'm, I'm connected to the church in California because such and such is the pastor. Or I'm connected to a church in, in Michigan because such and such is the pastor. Well, that's cool. And that's great. But are you really doing it for the right reason? Meaning, are you connected because you want to see God move in that area? Or are you doing it because you want to say that I'm connected to this big time church and, and it gives me some kind of clout? Because the word says your goodness is nothing but filthy rags. So just because you're doing some things that you uh, proceed to be good doesn't necessarily mean it's effective. I'd rather be in place than just at a place. Because at the end of the day, when I'm in place and I'm doing what God has called me to do, uh, then God can actually flow through me and I can be effective at what I do and not just doing it just because it's Sunday. Uh, I'm going to say that one more time. It's better. To, and I've been saying this all year because he gave it to me at the end of last year. I'd rather be in place than just at a place. Some of us are just at places because of the name of the church or the name of the pastor. We got to understand post pandemic, this whole thing, God, he took away the idols. He took away the buildings. He took away the, 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 the meeting spaces. So now it's you and him. So choose you this day what you're really going to do. Because just because you say you go to this church don't mean you've actually been effective. And I'm going to give you the last word for the day uh, as we close out for prayer and uh, the last word on what I just said. Well, I, I think too, this is where we, we struggle as churches and we struggle as pastors. And, and you know this because you've been around church your whole life. Um, we struggle, we, we really, we say we, we do this, but we struggle at really being collaborative. Um, we struggle at that. So if we're talking about having, making an impact, if then I belong to a church that's not in my community and that's the church I like and that's the church I love, the pastor I like, pastor I love, and I can't be involved there, then perhaps I should find a place locally where at least I can work in, and use my service and be of service right in my local community, uh, helping out those in my local community. While still, you know, if, if I want to be a member of, of X church over here, I can still be a member of X church over there. Because if we're really being collaborative, watch this, then the goal should be for God to receive the glory and the entirety of the kingdom of God to be blessed. So if the entirety of the kingdom of God is blessed, that means I can serve wherever I can serve that's closer to me, even if I belong to a church somewhere else. But we got to do a, a, a better job of, of being, and that's myself included, of being collaborative, of really working together across um, all kinds of lines, across denominational lines, across social lines, across racial lines. We have mm -hmm. to really work that the kingdom of God might be um, edified so the name of God might be glorified. Yes. But, but it starts with that understanding of, you know, what we, what we started off today. You are the church. Wherever you go, you are the church. So you're representing the church wherever you are. You're representing God wherever you are. Yeah. So, all right, everybody, it's 1234. We're going to get off. But um, I really want to thank Brother Ernest Lee. I want to thank, again, Sister Letitia Frey. 
I want to thank y'all for, for helping make this a success. Please like it. Please share it. Please post it. Also, um, if you would like to, even in the comments here, uh, leave comments about any future topics you'd like to hear us talk about, or things you'd like to see us talk about, or any guests you'd like to see us bring on, you know, and, and talk about some things. We're having a good time with this. I look forward to this every week. I'm enjoying it. So uh, everybody, let's just bow our heads for a moment of prayer as we close out. Lord, we thank you again for this opportunity you've given us asking that you would remind us that we are the church, we are your body, we are your representation on this earth, and everything we do must be done to your glory and for the edification of your people. And in all we do, Lord, we just want to show them Jesus in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks, everybody. Love you all. Look forward to